Like my content and want to see it early? Well, you can. For a dollar a week or four dollars a month, you will know what videos I'll be doing for the week and you'll get to see a video of your choice every Thursday. So if this interests you, you can become a member by clicking the join button today and get access to wicked cool sub badges as well. If you can't though, I totally understand and I just wanted to thank you so much for watching and being an awesome member of our community. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a great day as well. So last week we ranked all the Firestarter Pokemon from weakest to strongest. So today, I wanted to continue that series with ranking all the water type Pokemon. As I did last week, we're going to be ranking all these Pokemon based on the most recent appearances in game. So that way, we can objectively talk about all the starters. Also, it seems a lot of you weren't too happy with me not talking about TMs last week. I wanted to mainly focus on what they could do learn set wise, but from this point onwards, we'll talk about how those non natively learned moves as well. That still would have been how I ranked the fire starters, so the order wasn't affected by that in the slightest. Okay, with that out of the way, I think we can dip our toes into the water with these 8 starter Pokemon. Starting off this ranking is the worst starter Pokemon being Samurott. Samurott is by far the weakest of all the water starters for a variety of reasons. Pushing its lackluster design aside, its stats actually don't look bad on paper, having a base 100 attack stat and a base 108 special attack stat. However, what is unfortunate is its base 70 speed, its very shallow move pull, and is overall lacking everywhere. It has semi-great coverage with Ice Beam, Blizzard, and Grass Knot, and also has access to Swords Dance, which helps it set up. And that's a good thing, right? Well, mostly. See, with that 70 base speed, it makes it very hard for Samurott to set up. In a meta where things are mainly fast paced, that's its biggest downfall. It can easily be revenge killed. It also has no healing support in being a tank. It can't really hang with the bigger tanks out there. The hidden ability it has as well makes it an even bigger insult to injury. Shell Armor screams tank, but it just can't hack it as a tank. Maybe if Samurott had Dragon Dance or maybe some kind of healing support, it would be better. Coming up next is a more bulky water Pokemon being Empoleon. Firstly, let me say, I love Empoleon a lot. It has access to a lot of great defensive utility options, such as Defog, Stealth Rocks, and the ability to phase opponents out. But where it lacks is that the water still typing, I feel this leads to more issues than it's worth. The still typing just adds more weaknesses to Empoleon that it doesn't need. On top of that too, Empoleon also does not have access to any recovery moves. That makes it lack a lot for a defensive based Pokemon. If Empoleon had a recovery move, I feel it would be able to be utilized much more as a defensive wall. Its lack of set up is also not that great, only having access to Swords stance and agility. All the other water starters that are placed higher on the list have a decent amount of setup options aside from two, but that one still has access to pivot and its stats are fantastic, enough to break away from a problem naturally without much setup. There's also one more, but I don't want to get too deep into that realm because no spoilers. So bottom line, Empoleon is a great Pokemon, but it lacks recovery and any reliable setup. So I know a lot of you might disagree with this placement, but please hear me out. We have Inteleon a bit higher up than most of you expected. Yeah, I know, I'm just as surprised as you are. A lot of people have given Inteleon grief over the last few months, myself included. I will stand by by me not liking its design that much, but putting trivial things like that aside, it's actually pretty good. First, taking a look at its stats, we see a massive 125 in its special attack, and another massive 120 in its speed. Sure, it might be a bit more frail with those poor defenses, but a fast attacking glass cannon makes a lot of sense for a sniper like Inteleon, doesn't it? Its move pull isn't half bad either, as it's able to choose from many different coverage moves like Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse, and Air Slash. For water coverage, I would say the best move it has by far is of course its signature move, Snipe Shot, an 80 base power move that has an increased critical hit ratio, but also ignores moves and abilities that would otherwise draw in Inteleon's attack. If all of that wasn't enough, Inteleon will also gain a Gigantamax form and a hidden ability in the future, which will make it really formidable. That G-Max form offers it a great move in G-Max Hydro Snipe, which just flat out ignores the target's abilities. On top of that, the hidden ability it will be gaining in the future is none other than Sniper, which increases the power of critical hits by 1.5 times. So imagine, if you will, an Inteleon coupled with a Scope Lens, Snipe Shot with a Sniper ability. Yeah, if you're weak to water or don't resist it, Inteleon will mess you up big time. So I just mentioned quite a few positive reasons as to why Inteleon is great. So why is it in the bottom four? Well, the defenses. The defenses are so low on Inteleon, it's a literal piece of paper. One whack and it's out. But because of its offensive prowess, it at least makes nearly the halfway point. There's also the fact that I know Inteleon is still pretty new and needs to prove its worth. But I'm positive that over time, people will begin to fear this Pokemon. 
A Pokemon I am proud to say made the top 5 list is Feraligatr, and for very good reason. I feel I really don't need to talk much about why it's here. Feraligatr has access to the ability Sheer Force, and has access to moves like Dragon Dance, which help it set up to destroy absolutely everything. Swords Dance is also great, but I feel D-Dance is just better for speed. That doesn't mean Swords Dance can't be run though. Given it has access to Sheer Force and Aqua Jet along with a combination of Swords Dance, it can be an excellent wall breaker if it can set up properly. That priority Aqua Jet also really helps Feraligatr in situations with at least one or two setups. Going into coverage, Feraligatr has that covered too. Some notable moves I can think of are Crunch, Earthquake, and Ice Punch. All of these take care of Feraligatr's biggest weaknesses. Feraligatr shreds, I don't really think I need to explain much more than that. Next up we have Alola's lovely singing mermaid, Primarina. Primarina was the first and is currently the only starter Pokemon to be blessed with the amazing fairy type as its secondary typing, which kind of makes it good by default. Not only that, but it's got some great stats to back up that great type combination. More specifically that 126 in special attack and 116 in special defense. Having that high of special attack and special defense also benefits it from using choice specs in the assault vest. These two items actually really help Primarina make its case. Items aside though, in Generation 8, Primarina gets access to Calm Mind. This is what makes Primarina play so high on this list. Having access to that kind of setup is absolutely deadly. Its HP and defense are also decent enough, so it can definitely take a few hits. Really the only thing awful on it is at 60 base speed, but that seems to be a problem with most Alolan Pokemon. Its move pool isn't really bad by any means either, although it wouldn't hurt if it were just a little bit wider. It's got access to great stab moves like Moonblast and its signature move Sparkling Aria, while also pulling power from great coverage moves like Psychic and Ice Beam. Primarina does actually have a cool hidden ability in concept as well with Liquid Voice, turning all sound based moves into water type moves. But it seems that's just not too popular, with most people just sticking with the standard Torn ability. All in all, Primarina is not bad by any means thanks to the fairy typing, but it could definitely benefit from a larger move pool. Moving back to Generation 1, we have the OG water starter Pokemon up next, Blastoise. Now even though Blastoise is a veteran Pokemon, it would be a bit of a fallacy to say that it's been really popular to use in recent years. It's definitely been able to hold its own for a while now, but as many other great Pokemon came to the forefront in the competitive Pokemon scene, this beautiful turtle fell from grace in such a tragic way. I mean, even a Mega Evolution in Gen 6 and 7 couldn't really stop people from shunning it. This was truly surprising because of how good Mega Blastoise actually was. It had massive buffs in both its attack and defense stats, which were pretty scary enough, but the true error came from that Mega Launcher ability. A 50% increase on moves like Dragon Pulse, Dark Pulse, Aura Sphere, and Water Pulse was just plain good. Blastoise was really let down in those generations by not being used more often, so I feel it was my duty to shine a little bit of light on it. However, things have just started to turn around for Blastoise in Generation 8 because of one simple move. Shell Smash. Yeah, it's crazy to think Blastoise didn't have this move available to it until now, but here we are. If you're unfamiliar, Shell Smash is a move that lowers the user's defenses by one stage while upping their attack stat and speed by two stages. And as you can see, Blastoise's attack, special attack, and speed are nothing to write home about, while its defense stats are a sight for sore eyes. Pairing this move with a White Herb certainly makes Blastoise a Pokemon you don't want to mess with, as it'll be bulky, powerful, and fast. And with the move pool as wide as Blastoise's, any of your Pokemon could be up on the chopping block. On top of the Shell Smash Gen 8 buff, we also have two more buffs Blastoise got. Plus one speed with Rapid Spin, and with the addition of Iron Defense and Body Press. Rapid Spin on a bulky Pokemon like Blastoise really comes in handy for outspeeding some threats out there, and can really help Blastoise do its job a lot better. Not to mention this guy is getting a crazy Gigantamax form, so it'll be really interesting to see what broken G-Max move it'll get on top of its already powerful moveset. Don't sleep on Blastoise like you did in the last two generations. You'll be disappointed if you do. In the penultimate spot, we have the Mudfish Pokemon, Swampert. It was a pretty tough decision when it came to where I should put it, but ultimately I thought the number two spot was best for this beast. For starters, take a look at these stats. Yes, it sports an unimpressive 60 base speed, but with 90 in both defenses, a huge 110 in attack, and the second largest HP set of all the starters with 100, this one small Mudkip is packed with some serious strength and bulk. Oh yeah, and it only has one weakness in the grass type. Being quad weak isn't fun, but when it's your only weakness, you can't complain too much. But in all honesty, you really don't have to complain now because hidden power is gone in Gen 8, therefore no hidden power grass. How about its move pull? Surprisingly, it's pretty vast. Waterfall and Earthquake are incredible stab moves to say the very least, but you can also top off a moveset with the likes of Superpower and Ice Punch. It's really, really nice. 
But even that isn't what makes Swampert the bee's knees. That is due to it having a mega evolution. Base 150 attack, 110 in both defenses, and a little extra sprinkled onto its special attack and speed. Extreme bulk and attack good enough for you? No? Okay. What well, about Swift Swim? Yeah. That's right, in addition to these crazy stats, the Mad Lads at Game Freak thought to give its Mega the Swift Swim ability, effectively doubling its speed in the rain, taking care of its only real problem, with proper setup of course. Honestly, I think Swampert is one of the most underrated starter Pokemon, despite Mudkip's immense popularity. It's so powerful, yet I feel it's never talked about. I really do hope that we soon see this big lug return to the games, as I want to see what it will be able to accomplish in the next gen. This one was really obvious, and you probably already first saw it in the very beginning of the video. The strongest water starter is obviously Greninja, and we all know why. Protean and Ash Greninja. Protean makes any move Greninja uses stab. So Extrasensory is stab. Gunk Shot is stab. U-turn, you get it. Its stats are also excellent, and the amount of moves it has access to are stupid insane. And then I mentioned that those moves are also Stab? Stab should honestly be Greninja's middle name at this point. With how crazy and diverse Greninja's move pool is too, there's a lot of room in its moveset. You can run virtually anything, and that's what makes it so scary, especially when you look at the competitive ladder. It also has the ability to set up spikes and toxic spikes, which adds some great utility to Greninja as well. It also gets access to Taunt, which even further adds to its amazing utility. There is, however, one more point I need to cover being Ash Greninja. Ash Greninja is this stupid busted. I mean, look at these stats for crying out loud. It also possesses the ability Battle Bond, which powers up Water Shuriken. Having that multi-hitting move powered up as such an extreme and those busted stats helps Ash Greninja decimate everything in its path. Not to mention, Water Shuriken was also made into a special attacking move in Gen 7, further aiding Ash Greninja in its vengeance. Choice Specs also helps out a lot here. Greninja is an amazing Pokemon. I would even argue it's the strongest of all the starters. Well, that pretty much wraps up my rankings of all the water starter Pokemon from Weakest to Strongest. The water starters are very big contenders for being the strongest set of all the starter Pokemon. There is so much power behind these Pokemon, and I love that I was able to talk about them all positively to at least a degree. Other than that though, I feel very confident in these rankings. But of course, I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know if you agree with these rankings or not, and let's get some discussion going. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Also, I've been reviewing every episode of My Hero Academia Season 4 over on Mystic Sage, so head over there if you're into that too. I would love that a lot. Want to support me further further in game called Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leone, Lady Crim Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weez Austin, Sodden Grider, Nigma97, and Kermit117 did, and I wanted to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapped this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.